We are discussing very important part of the differential equation. Last uh, time I have just given you the higher order differential equation to take the second order differential equation. As you said one uh, solution is given, we want to find the second solution. We use two methods for that one, one by substitution as well as formula. Now we are having a differential equation and we want to solve it. It can be higher order mean, it can be higher than one. It can be second order, third order, fourth order. Mostly in uh, physics or in nature. We having second order differential equation. We focus on that one, but anyhow we will solve the equation which is of higher order. So there are two type of uh, things we are getting. One is with the homogeneous one, another is non-homogeneous one. So I just give you the example for this one. For example, I have a differential equation a d2y by dx square uh, plus b dy by dx uh, plus cy is equal to f of x. Now this equation, you know, we can say this is my second order differential equation. A, B, C are constant, so is with the constant coefficients. The right hand side is not zero. We say this equation is second order homogeneous differential equation. Sorry, second order non-homogeneous differential equation. Now if I write the same equation as A d2y by dx squared and plus B dy by dx plus cy and put this equal to 0. Now my this equation is homogeneous differential equation because all the terms are containing y and y equal to 0 is the solution of the differential equation, the trivial solution always present in case of the homogeneous equation. The highest order is uh, second, so second order. The coefficients are constant, so these are the constant coefficient. So I am going to solve this equation which is the second order differential equation with the constant coefficient. The method is we make a substitution here and our substitution is y is equal to e to power mx we say is solution of the differential equation. Is the solution of differential equation which means it must satisfy my differential equation. Now I find here dy by dx. My dy by dx is equal to m e to power mx. I take second derivative because I want to replace this one here. Then I get here d2y by dx square is equal to m square e to power mx. We take the derivative of this one, e to power mx, the derivative of mx is m, again e to power mx, derivative of mx is m, m into m is m square. Now I substitute in my differential equation. My differential equation is a d to y by dx square plus b dy by dx plus cy is equal to 0. I put the values, I get here a m square e to power mx plus a b m e to power mx plus c e to power mx and that's equal to 0. I take e to power mx common. What I get here, I get here a m square plus b m plus c equal to 0. Now you can see here, I, as I told you, that if this is the homogeneous equation, then there is one solution is y equal to 0 is our trivial solution is always present. If we say is a trivial solution always present. But here when we say want to find the solution, want to find non-trivial solution, so this must not be equal to zero. When this is equal to zero, it means we get the trivial solution. Now here say this is not equal to zero. Here we say e to power mx is not equal to zero. If this is not equal to zero, then we are left with only that we have a m square plus b m plus c equal to 0 and this equation is our quadratic equation and we call this equation as the characteristic equation. So this is related with our differential equation and we call it as characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. For each differential equation, homogeneous form, we can make the substitution y equal to mx and we can find here the characteristic equation. So here this is a second, uh, this is quadratic equation and we find the value of uh, m, we get two values of m and we substitute here then we will find the, the two solution, we can say y1 is e to power m1x and y2 is equal to m2x. But here in quadratic equation you know there are three possibilities, number one we get the real roots and they are not equal, possibility two is we get the real roots but they are equal, possibility three is that we get the complex root, so we have in case one case 1 we get here two roots m1 
and m2 we say m1 is not equal to m2 and they are real so it means we get here two solutions we get here y1 is equal to e to power m1x we get here y2 e to power e to power m2x now if we are having two solutions and they are linearly independent we can write the general solution our general solution is c1 y1 plus c2 y2 so that will give me here this is equal to y is equal to c1 e to power m1x plus c2 e to power m2x now if our equation is of third order then here we get here the polynomial function in m of degree 3 and that will give me three roots so we get three solution y1 y2 y3 and general solution will be c1 y1 c1 plus c2 y2 and c2 y3 so this is our case one we go to the case two our case two is that we get here two solutions m1 and m2 the solutions are real but solutions are equal so it means we get only one solution y1 is equal to e to power m1x now we have seen that when we are given here one solution and we give the differential equation we can find y2 so it's y2 by using the formula is y1 integral e to power minus integral p of x dx over y1 whole square into dx so that give me the second solution now when I get the second solution then I can write here my y is equal to c1 y1 plus c2 y2 that's my general solution this was my case 2 now I go to case 3 in case 3 I have the solutions m1 m2 are the form of alpha plus minus iota beta they are complex they are not real they are not real so we having two roots the two roots alpha plus iota beta and alpha minus iota beta so I can write my y y is equal to y1 is e to power m1x that's alpha plus iota beta into x I can open this one I can write here e to power alpha x plus iota beta x or I can write this e to power alpha x into e to power minus iota plus iota beta x so I take here y2 well, y2 is e to power m2 my m2 is alpha minus iota beta into x and that give me e to power alpha x minus <coughs> iota beta x and that give me here e to power alpha x into e to power minus iota beta x so this is my y1 y2 if i want to find my general solution so i can write my general solution my general solution y is equal to c1 y1 the c2 y2 so that's equal to c1 what's y y1 y1 e to power alpha x into e to power minus iota beta x and what's my c2 c2 y2 is e to power alpha x e to power minus iota beta x come the real part and this imaginary part i take e to power alpha x common i get here c1 e to power iota beta x and plus c2 e to power minus iota beta x so i hope that you know this uh, relationship that we're having it by uh, it by it by iota theta is equal to cosine theta plus iota sine theta and it power minus iota theta is equal to cosine theta minus iota sine theta we use this one and we change this one our values of uh, it power uh, iota beta x and it power minus iota beta x i can write this is equal to it power alpha x I get here c1 into cosine beta x plus iota c2 c, uh, sine beta x sine beta x then here we having the plus sine and we can have here uh, close this one plus c2 we are having here minus iota beta x we get here minus sine here cosine beta x minus iota sine beta x so I simplify it further I can write this equal to e to power alpha x I get here c1 cos, uh, cosine beta x plus c1 i c1 sine beta x plus c2 cosine beta x minus i c2 sine beta x so I take here 
the term is cosine beta x and sine beta x separately. I can write here it by alpha x is equal to c1 plus c2 cosine beta x. We take cosine beta x common from these two terms. Here we are having this term c1 cosine beta x and c2 cosine beta x. And then we take here the beta x common, sine beta x common. I will get here this is equal to c1 minus c2 and i sine beta x. So here I make a substitution and I say that I take here capital C1 is equal to C1 plus C2 another constant and capital C2 is equal to C1 minus C2 i. So this is my substitution and I can now write my final result for y. So my y is equal to e to the power alpha x into C1 cosine beta x plus c2 sine beta x. So this is my result when my roots are complex. So here this roots were number one. They were, uh, this was case one. M1, M2 was not equal. They were real. Case two was that M1, M2 are real but they are equal. And here they were not equal. Case three was M1, M2 are complex. So these are the three cases and we are coming across when we are solving this one uh, problems we get the roots real not equal real equal and complex roots. So here one more thing which uh, you must uh, learn and those who have learned in school and uh, nicely and their master in doing that on the factorization and that help you a lot. When you know the factorization these are very easy but if you don't know it you make some practice here yeah, because we are just depending upon we get the correctest equation like we get here and then the whole game is depending upon the factorization roots of these equations and with the root of this equation we get the solution because here we get here two roots real not equal here we get two roots real equal and here we get two roots which are complex. So I will give you some ideas about the factorization and go further.